What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Toronzo Show. I'm excited today. I have my best friend here with me. Um, a son, Trey. What's good? I don't know what to call this nigga, y'all. He go by a couple of different names. I ain't know which one to say. We got to make sure everything is clear. Um, but no, yeah, I got a lot of stuff we're going to talk about today. Um, this is my first interview that's kind of visual, so it feels kind of weird. We only got one microphone, y'all. We're underfunded. The cash app is going to be right here. So you can get us um, some new equipment because it's expensive. The taxes still ain't hit. They still haven't hit. Um, and if yours have, give us a loan. I'm good for it. He is too. Y'all see this. Okay, ready to spend the money. He stayed traveling. Um, but no, so the first thing I'm going to talk about today, um, I actually got tricked, believe it or not. It didn't happen recent, but it's still fresh on my heart. And um, I got tricked by a trans man so yeah so the opposite of what the ordinary is or a lot of guys say that they got tricked by a transgender woman um which i mean it, i believe it does happen for sure but do i believe it happened as much as niggas say that it's happening i think that's bullshit um and the reason that i say that is bullshit for number one is because i used to fuck girls back in the day and there was no way in hell that i was ever gonna like not figure out what's going down there first. You mean to tell me you didn't put two fingers down there, put it in real quick, do a little that feel for bumps. You want to feel how hairy it is, especially if you're planning on eating it. You don't just, it's never been a situation where it was just like, you know what? I walk up, they pull pants down, they spread the hole, and I'm just inserting. That doesn't happen. That's bullshit. So, um, yeah, y'all can save that little story. But it happened a little different for me. A little everybody. That's probably everybody's excuse. It happened a little different for me. Um, and if you're getting your dick sucked, I get it. If you're getting your dick sucked, if they got a pretty face, then that makes a lot more sense how you can – they can kind of trick you in that sense. But if it's dick the whole, that's bullshit. I don't believe that. Can't nobody tuck that good. Nobody can tuck that good. Um, and it's okay to fuck them. They really – they're beautiful girls. They just got to – it's a dick down there. And I even have talked to – guys who basically so a lot of people watch gay porn what a lot of people need to realize too most watched gay porn is by straight females black straight females 1000 percent. and i didn't got offered so many times to be a third in people's relationships i didn't got a lot of my straight homes go told me before like you know my fantasy is to like like fuck a guy um so it's very much a thing and I kind of got off track for a split second. Um, but we're going to wrap back around to... <laughs> we're going to wrap back around to the story I want to tell. So, yeah, I had met this guy on Tinder. And he was cute or whatever. So I invited him to come over. And we he came over. And, you know, we were smoking, drinking, chilling. And, you know, pics was fire. Um, he didn't give me, like, no weird vibes, but what I did realize is he didn't want to send no news. So we added each other on Snapchat and all of that, and I'm like, you know, let me see what it looked like. Because I got to know what I'm, I want to know what I'm getting myself into, especially if this ain't about to be nothing um, long term. I need you to kind of give me a little hint of um, what you're trying to do. Um, and so, yeah. They did not send me no news, so I kind of thought that was like weird at first, but then they kind of made me feel bad, and I felt like the whore for a second, so I'm like, okay, maybe everybody don't want to send naked pictures, you got to kind of understand that. Cool, I get it. So um, they come over, we smoking, drinking, chilling, um, and then we decide to lay down. So by this time, we fucked up, the music just playing, and then we decide to put on a movie. So once we put on the movie, um, we start to cuddle. So as we cuddle a little closer, uh, I take my, I don't waste no time. I took my clothes straight off. Not all of my clothes. I still had my shorts on and some underwear under them, but my shirt was off and it was pretty much laying sideways and it was dick to ass. So that's what we was at with it. So we grinding, doing a little slow, you know, the little side hump kind of thing. And so naturally, um, another thing too, back when I was having sex with females, it was a little bit different. I didn't really get the full pleasure of like the full sex experience. I don't think is because a lot of, or when you're having straight sex, you don't really, I guess it's more judgy in the straight setting because they don't like a girl, not about to sit here and like suck a nigga nipples. Although that feels fucking amazing. And you only knew if your nigga take forever to come, you start sucking them nipples. It's going to cut that time down 
in half automatically. Um, so I didn't know what that was like. I had never had my ass ate. I had never had um, nobody really like kiss my whole entire body. I never had my toes sucked. It was a lot. I was missing out on it. It's like, damn, you know, even though I thought the sex was great on the other side, shit, a little bit crazy over here. And I was with it. So, um, yeah, I went straight for the nipple. Try to go for the nipple, rub the nipple, smacks my hand away. So I'm like, why are you smacking my hand away? Um, it was a little weird. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm moving a little too fast. But you smack my hand away, you reach that hand down, and you start kind of like feeling on my Johnson, right? So now I'm confused. I'm like, why did you just smack my hand away, but you still clearly try to like feel on me? So I'm like, okay, maybe they just not with the nipple stuff. I don't really know. So I thought I read it wrong, so I tried again. Tried to go back up. I got like halfway. I felt like a little kind of like a dent in a way. I don't know how to explain it. Like a, I guess what may have felt like a surgery mark, but I didn't think that too far in it at the time. And then it let me go a little bit further, but I never felt the nipple. So I'm, I'm feeling for like the little bump thing and it's not there. So I'm just like feeling around and it's just like bare chest. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, where is the fuck is this nigga's nipple at? Um, so I try to go to the other side and there was no nipple over there either, but I could still feel a line kind of like right here so i still didn't kind of like put two and two together i just said fuck it and i just caught rubbing where i thought the nipple was at um so we kept going kept going kept going doing that she's still or oh god i'm gonna get canceled he is still <laughs> no i'm sorry um he is still he is still um yeah rubbing on me and by this point um they even like pulled my shorts down so i'm thinking like okay we about to really keep it in the gear so i'm like you know what fuck it i put my hands in the pants start grabbing a little ass so i start grabbing the ass that was fine nice ass firm it was it was a nice ass so i tried to like kind of like go down instead of going through the front i try to enter through the back i'm going through the balls way when i'm going through the balls way all i fear is like some like fuzzy kind of feeling and it's like i know what pubic hair feel like but i want to say this i think the female pubic hair and male pubic hair feel different because instantly once i felt that pubic hair i was like this a pussy in my head i was like this is giving it's soft but i ain't get that far it won't pussy yet all right <laughs> Look, it won't pussy in my head yet no but it was yeah but it was no course i'm like yeah it's just like a fresh and there but no narrow have you coursey so i don't know what the hell was going on so um i kept reaching kept reaching as i'm going through the middle where i guess you know where the balls would be um he clenched his legs up real tight so i'm like okay you stopped me from the breast part you stopped me from the butt part what the fuck are we gonna do so what happens after that Rest the butt. Oh, so I tried to go for it. So I, at this point, I was just like, you know what, fuck it. Because I, so he let me put my hands inside of his underwear. I'm grabbing ass, right? His hand is inside of my pants grabbing dick. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to grab me a little dick too. So I go for it and I feel like the lips, but I feel something hard. He had two pair of underwear on. So it was like some spank little i guess i don't know i guess what you call like biker shorts and then like some underwear under that so i'm still feeling through like the little spanx and i feel something like really hard so i'm thinking like maybe he has like a chode like the little small dinglings um but no it's called a pecker or a packer i said it wrong the first time it's called a packer and so basically what it is is once they transition they put that inside of them which basically just kind of mimics the idea of what a penis would be like so in my head i'm thinking like okay i'm feeling like a little dick on soft which i was fine with because my gag reflex sucks so i'm like okay you know what we're working with a little one if i gotta suck a little dick tonight so be it but at least i know I won't be gagging tries to reach down a little bit further and i feel in and i can feel like the separation in there and that's when i realized it was a vagina yeah, so I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to, like, make it awkward or, like, say something rude and they, like, spaz out on me or, like, feel bad. Because I don't want to feel like a bully, but it's, like, at the same time, motherfucking end of the day, you tricked me. Because had you told me, maybe I would have, might have been into that. Who knows? Um, because you look good. Obviously, you know, you made it that far into my bed. But that shit is weird. Like, don't trick me like that. And so when I did in my head, I was, like, when I felt it, I had kind of, like, moved it a little. And I was, like, ah! 
ah! Like I was like kind of like scared, um, and I didn't want to like knock it out because that's when I kind of realized what it. Once literally as soon as I touched it, I realized thinking about it, I was like, okay, that's exactly what the fuck that was. And my friend had told me about it too, um, and so pretty much what I had to do. Um, he had kept, you know, kind of like trying to like jerk me off. So in my hand, I thought of my favorite porn. I came, I turned my back, went to sleep. Next day, he left and I blocked him. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. I got tricked when I was, this was fairly recent. This was within the last two years. This was within the last two years for sure. Um, have you ever had any? Are you into so what kind of guys do you like? Or girls or trans? We're all inclusive here at the Toronto show. Well, um, no, I have not had my own personal experience. I have texted back and forth on the grind. Did you know that they were trans or no? Once they sent me pictures I saw that like I saw that they were trans. But through the pictures, no, I had no clue. It said nothing about it in the profile. We go to exchanging pictures on the grind, and that's where, ooh, I'm working like, wait, I like cooch, I like dig, it's, yeah. but I'm looking like, he this, like this doesn't look like something I'm used to. They've been through. <laughs> so let me ask you this, which way, when you say that, do you mean trans woman or trans man? Do you have a preference of either or, or does it not matter? This was a trans man. Okay. I think I'm saying that right. A so woman. They, no, I'm lying. This was a trans woman. woman. Okay. A man who had became a woman. Okay. A, it just threw me. I can't lie. Um, I am very open to the idea, but... I'm a litter. You have to sit me down and walk me through it. And so, what made you say no with that person? With that person, it was just like they were so pushy. Um, they are ready to have sex that night. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it the first time I meet you. Like, it's just not gonna happen. Um, it was just like, oh, we gotta have sex. We gotta do it right now. I'm gonna miss my train if you can't do it, and I might die tomorrow morning. So we have to do it today. It's no point. See, those kind of people make me think you're trying to give me something. Back up. Very much so, gave me. Oh, you want me to have the what you got vibes? Forty-eight hours. Try it again. <laughs> no, for real. No, for real. I don't fucking it saves you a lot of a lot of stress in the long run. Okay. So we have been friends. I want to say for like. Five and a half, six years now. What year are we in? The no complaints. Twenty twenty four. It's like twenty nineteen, right? Yeah, twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. Okay. Um, do you want to tell, or do you want me to tell the story of how we met? Oh my god. <laughs> I want you to tell the story. Okay. <laughs> All right, so y'all, we got scammed, um, by. This white man. All right, let me tell you how. Let me tell how you. The part, how I end up meeting you. Okay. You okay. You. Yeah. So we ended up. We basically ended up getting scammed by this white man, and um, we was seeking out work at the time, and I was doing like social media stuff. I had my little news page at the time, trying to like promote, and yeah, this guy. This guy I had found told me, you know, I'm running to be governor. And I'm looking for a couple of assistants who can, you know, help me out. And so, you know, I signed up. He was like, all I want you to do is, you know, run my social media. I made this nigga a Facebook page, a Twitter page, an Instagram page. I'm promoting, promoting, promoting. I'm getting all the niggas from the hood to like it. I'm sending this to my family members. Everybody on Facebook is liking it. Um, and so, yeah, doing great, doing great. He telling us, you know, you're going to get paid X amount of dollars per hour and this is going to be, you know, how you pay out. He had us create a fucking um, portal, basically, like you setting up direct deposit through a regular job. This nigga had me filling out paperwork, all types of shit. Um, fuck around and using, uh, I don't want to say too much just yet, <laughs> but basically he was just using it all as like a front. 
um, you know, the black guys, you know, obviously I have these young black guys behind me, you know, they're doing, you know, this is and that. So it has to be real, you know, from the outside looking in, because otherwise, why would they be helping this old raggedy white piece of shit looking motherfucker? Because he looks terrible. His teeth was fucked up. His hair is fucking up more worse than Donald Trump. It was like a toupee, but his hair was thinning like really, really bad. So it was giving comb over tees or was it bald? I don't even remember. Um Oh, it was the comb over with the little fucked up thin middle. How the guys be, the older guys be wearing it. He looked like he just had a rough go of it after he lost everything on Wall Street. I don't know how to explain it. But um, we were working for him and we was logging hours and hours and hours. A week passed, two weeks passed, three weeks passed. We started asking questions. Um, He like, you know, the bank is this is that. We got to wait until, you know, the payment goes through. I have to contact this person. You know I wouldn't get over on you. Start gaslighting. Little narcissist piece of shit. Uh, start gaslighting. Um, you know, I would never get over on you. Um, you know, I gave you the job. Um, you should be grateful. Like, getting slick at the mouth and all types of shit, which when people do that kind of stuff, they want you to pop off real bad so you can't pay them. But no, I was real nice nasty about it. And so um, come to find out, it was more than just me working for him as far as the little black boys go, which I knew when I'm, you know, posting to social media and seeing certain stuff, I knew it was more like people working for him, but I couldn't really confirm it. I'm just seeing like the CCs, you know, in the emails and stuff like that. So comes time to- goes on, comes <laughs> to him. I get a motherfucking email out of nowhere and it was from him. <laughs> because where is my money? <laughs> know you guys so at this point uh wait real quick the motherfucker at this point the motherfucker owed me like eighteen hundred dollars the bitch gonna say well i can cash up you twenty five dollars and i'll work on the rest you can't cash up me a goddamn thing you cocksucking son of a bitch <laughs> no, you got- <laughs> it was sick you guys so i'm at home i had just moved to virginia literally don't even like to drive at night. Won't drive to save my life. Just a little boy just trying to make it. I get hired as the uh, campaign manager on this man's campaign. I'm up in here working hours to the end. I have social anxiety. I don't like to go outside. So I'm just, I'm wrapped up in my job. I throw myself into my job. You guys, when my check did not come and those bills were due. <laughs> I must have turned into the motherfucking CIA. Because who else is at this? Oh, I remember we had emails. Let me yes. go through the people in the emails. Toronto. Toronto. When was the last... When was the last time you got paid? Because I have not received a check yet. It was, I was supposed to get paid yesterday. So 12 o'clock. I- so Where's that? the money? Taranza emails me back. Well, there's another guy working for him as well. Maybe he hasn't been paid either because I haven't gotten a check in. This is the second or third time I haven't been paid. Taranza tells me that. I instantly call Mike. Mike, what you got going, buddy? Which is a fake name. That's not his real name. Mm, so much more. Mike tells me I could bring you to a barbecue. We could chill. I'll get my parents to send the money. At this point, it's dead. I'm looking like, yeah, I'm just going to wreck this man shit. We got to get together with Toronto. Me and Toronto start planning to take this man down. We did. <laughs> it was bad. We reached out to his parents. So we found out, well, first of all, we cracked the emails. We looked in the emails, and we found out that he was borrowing money to basically pay off not black only boys. Not was he paying for six from minors. He was also not paying his workers. He was behind on all his credit card bills. He was borrowing money from his adopted parents to live lavishly in the six streets. Hanging out with the night. local politicians, acting like he got money. 
It was a mess. Hanging out with the black people, going to barbecues, actually no, advertising. That's the sickest like, thing about it. I am with the people. Whole time, he want your kids, your that's little black boy. He was scoping them out the whole time. Grooming. And probably, like, at the cookout. I got a job for let you. Me, let I got me a find job out what for Mike's you. last name is. Mike for Virginia. <laughs> it came out more Look, that. Hashtag, hashtag Mike for Virginia. It, no, yeah. And it came out more that he in he was fucking um, the younger, but he was fucking, yeah. Like he said, he was fucking minor. And then he was fucking the other boy So there was three of us that was working with him at the time The young boy was just living his life He would just get money He would just pay that boy money To just go fuck off and do whatever um, The other boy Outside of the two of us Was also fucking him too He never responded to none of the emails He didn't respond to none of our Facebook messages Because he didn't want to go down with him Because he knew that they was running some scams It was horrible but yeah that is how we met y'all so yeah from there we pretty much became inseparable to be fucking honest um and then he moved back to mississippi we was in virginia he moved back to mississippi and we separated for like a couple of like a year or two really but we stayed in contact stayed on facetime all the time and um yeah, from there, the rest is history. We started like taking trips, and this is here we guys. are. Hopefully, y'all can see it. Insert's picture here. Oh, wait, now we're gonna have to blur him out. Look, because he gonna sue us. We can't take it out. A lawsuit. <laughs> Mike. I would love to see you in court. Okay. Leave, leave it in. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take all financial responsibilities for this video. No, listen. Then that son of a bitch had the nerve to get his fake lawyer talk him go email us like she going to sue us for hacking his emails and all this kind of stuff. How we hack anything and he gave us the passwords to run his social media, stupid. That was the dumbest shit I ever seen. Like it was going to scare us. They email back after we said we said. Maybe I'm black. <laughs> In a way, like what brother said. Um, okay, yeah, so I want you to tell me about your first time smoking or getting caught smoking. Wait, yeah, actually, both your first time smoking, whether it if you got caught on your first time, if you did not, a separate story for getting caught. Damn. Here I go. So <laughs> deep, <laughs> <laughs> nah, my Mississippi twang. Uh, the my first time smoking was absolutely terrible. Like at this point in life, I am bisexual. I like men. The boy who introduced me to smoke, I won't say his name. He know who he is. Yeah. He was smoking out of like one of those gravity bongs. The oh, like the my aunt had just came home. Up, yeah, yeah. Oh. my aunt had just came home from jail. Real prisoner, like real prisoner. Just served like ten years, type. Okay, I'm smoking. I go to this boy. I'm trying to be cute. I'm really trying to get him to kiss me. So this is my logic at the time. If we both put our mouths on the bottle, and I said I, I said this verbatim to this boy. If we both put our mouths on the bottom, bottle is kind of like kissing if I smoke after you. And he, sh I told him I had never smoked before. He was like, yeah, I'm going to show you. He hit it, mouth on bottle. Next, I hit it, mouth and body, and I didn't drink behind people, so it was like that was like you know what I mean. Yeah, We're was, fucking at this point. <laughs> yeah, my little childish ass fourteen year old mind. We are having sex. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> but now, um, yeah, when I hit the bottle, I guess it was just I tried to be cool, so I took in all the smoke. And me being the first time I ever taken in weed, the I hit the bottle, it hit me. I instantly started crying. I wasn't crying to the point where like I was sad or anything. It was just tears running down where I was coughing so much. Next thing I know, <laughs> next thing I know, I'm like, yeah, buddy, I just gotta go. I can't do this, I'm too high. I'm walking home, y'all, I am praying to God. That guy, if you could just get me unhigh, I will never do this again. If you could just give me, uh, I, I promise you, I will never do this again. This is the worst feeling I've ever you felt. Did, I didn't try. I <laughs> was trying to walk home. 
this is the prayer on the walk home. I had to jump a gate, y'all. The gate was already down. I threw myself over the gate. I literally just fell over the gate, like. <laughs> laid there for like 20 minutes just looking at the sky, like, guy, you gonna give me a high? When I finally got up, my mouth was so dehydrated, uh, D, like, I was like in that zone. I walked two houses over, I went inside. My aunt, just home from prison, I'm at the sink in the kitchen. She's in the living room. I got my head under the sink like this. I got my head under the sink like this, like. <laughs> my aunt walks into the kitchen and says, I know why you drinking that water like that. Mm-hmm. I smelt it on you when you came in here. Oh, D. She's going to tell my mom. She ain't tell. She, she, to this day, she ain't tell. Shout out to you, Auntie Twilight. You the realest OG I ever met. Wow. Hey, she, don't, she ain't never going to spill the beans. Wow. I would tell you about why she went to jail, but I might be spilling the beans. <laughs> <laughs> But nah, the first time I got caught smoking, I wasn't even smoking. I had just quit smoking the day before, y'all. Literally. But my best friend, Sadie, was like, yeah, I want to smoke on my way home from Waffle House. I was picking her up from work. Y'all, she was smoking a bowl the day after I quit. But I'm just got smoke around me. This is how my parents found out, like, oh, I'm with the smoke. Me and my friends are the smoke. (laughs) <laughs> we are the smoke <laughs> Y'all the police Was literally At the like In a parked car dealership On the road I turned onto the road My car Glass window Glass house Um Clouded up with the smoke She's smoking We hotboxing this shit She's smoking I'm not Y'all the police pulled me over They instantly get behind me I go over the bridge And some more I pull into the church parking lot Y'all do y'all know when I let my window down, I could ver- like I could visually see the clouds rolling out. And the man was just like three steps back. Do you have any mirror one in the car? The police. The police. I was thinking you talking about the aunt. D, this is the police. I am going to jail. <laughs> y'all, I'm 18. My friend is 16, 17. Y'all, they call her mom. They tried to take me to jail for contributing to the delinquency of a minor, and fighting that is not an easy task. That is like a rape charge. No, they thought that was going on my record. Who? Not me. <laughs> Here I go, officer. I wasn't even smoking. It don't matter. The smoke. He he literally seen the smoke coming out of her purse, yeah. and he still had to call her she mom because she was a minor. The blood is in the bag. <laughs> he can't search her still. She's a minor. Shout out to the um laws. I'm not saying, but that was my scenario. If you're ever in a predicament, look, if you're ever in a predicament, they can't search a minor's bag. They have to send them to their parents. I, hopefully, you're not their parents. Oh, so you didn't tell her to put the blunt in the bag. Mm-hmm. That was just the best thing that she could have did. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wink. Where the hell? Well, my family is snitches because this is what hell happened to me. Um, well, okay, when I got caught. So my first time getting caught by my mama, or I got by my family all together, I was out smoking with my cousin, Quan, and, um, yeah, we was in Danville and Cardinal Village, and we were smoking with this older lady, Josephine, shout out to her, I hope she's still kicking it, I think she is, um, and she was like 40-something at the time, and then we were smoking with some other guy that was like maybe 30 I was like four, 13, and my cousin was like 15. And so, yeah, we went over there. This is back when we were smoking Reggie. So we was real cheap. We were paid like five, ten dollars That's about four, five blunts, and we was living our best life. And, yeah, we was high as a motherfucker, and we went back to my grandma's house because that's where everybody was staying at. Went back to my grandma's house. 
my mama at home, mind you, you know, I'm over at my grandma's house as far as she know. So I also used to wear glasses. So I was kind of exaggerating at the time when I was at the eye doctor. I never needed the glasses. I was just being extra. I was like, you know what? Oh, I can't see. They was like, it was ABC. I was like, oh, I see ABX. I was just bullshitting the people. So they gave me some glasses. I never needed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I ended up losing my glasses after a while. Um, and so when I came back, my grandma looked at me and she was like, boy, your eyes red as hell. And I was like, no, that's because I don't got my glasses on. She was like, your mama know your eyes be that red? I was like, yeah, it's just because I ain't got my glasses. If I got my glasses, you know, they'll be all right. She was like, mm, okay. Why the fuck five, ten minutes later, I heard my mom big ass truck pull up outside. I knew it was her just from the, the engine alone. It was like, vroom, vroom. I was like, oh my God, we are fucked. So me and my cousin in the bathroom, we got toothpaste trying to wipe our mouth out. We trying to put fucking eye drops in. We literally trying to do anything we could. We cutting our fingernails because you know the smell being your nails. We cutting fingernails, washing nails, changing clothes, doing everything we can. My mom came in and she was like, I know you ain't fucking high. And I just sat there. <laughs> and she was like, get your ass in the car. I was like, fuck. And I walked out, and my girl was just looking at me like, and I'm just like, you motherfucker, you snitched on me. That's what I was thinking in my head. I still love you, but you snitched on me. Don't do me like that no more. <laughs> but so that's what happened. And, um, yeah, I went back, and I was denied, denied, denied. She was like, what you smoking? Nope. Was you around smoke? Nope. Who was smoking? I don't know. It was denied, denied, denied. I was not telling my mama no information. I don't know what the fuck it took for my godmother to come in there and was like, have you been smoking? And she was like, it's okay, nephew. I know you've been smoking. And she was like, you just, she's like, you just can't be smoking no more. But that's all right, though. You've been smoking, ain't it? I was like, yeah. My mom said, I know your motherfucking ass for smoking. And <laughs> she went the fuck off. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting plucked in the head by her, took me to my uncle's house. He plucked me around a little bit. My aunt probably would be, my grandma probably would be. It was the worst day ever. Um, did I stop smoking? Nope. I just got smarter about it. Kids, gotcha, you, Bucka. Don't, don't trust <laughs> no, for real. No, no, they the ops. They got yeah, me good. The they got me good. Crazy. They got me real good. And some uncles not work with them. But that's okay. I do want to talk about Griselda Blanca. Um, I don't know who all watched it yet. Well, just called Griselda, I think. I don't want to confuse y'all. Y'all pull up something weird on Tubi. Um, it is called Griselda. I honestly don't know what platform it's on because I watch it off of a third party website. Please don't sue me if you see this, Sophia Vergara. I love you so Allegedly. much. Allegedly it's a third party website, but I like to believe it's Netflix. Um, and if it's not on Netflix, guys, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a great show. Um, it shows Griselda Blanca. I like it for a whole lot of different reasons. Um, yeah, so for one, just being a boss bitch, you know, bouncing back to what she had did. She was a prostitute. I didn't know that. Griselda Blanca started off as a prostitute, and she worked her way up she ended up getting saved by a pimp right and no not a pimp she ended up getting saved by a great guy a great guy who happened to be in a cartel who kills and murders people so as great as that gets and he took her out of the prostitution life and made her the housewife she's spending money living lavish but also making game plans she very much in the field and she was a part of him making the money he ended up fumbling the bag and his brother big brother was the main supplier so what happens was he lost a couple of shipments he owes his brother a lot of money his brother made it clear that he always looked at Sophia Vergara which is Griselda Blanca um his wife romantically and the only way that he would forgive his debt is if he lets his wife sleep with him so he forced her husband forced her to go and sleep with his brother to clear the debt and he used the kids as an excuse and was like, oh well it's gonna happen to the kids you need to go ahead and do it. what's gonna happen to us the family blah 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 and then he had a nerd to say at the end oh we used to do this for a living anyway so it really shouldn't matter so yeah it was fucked up so she took all of that she said fuck him fuck that 
Um, she tried to leave in the middle of the night. He found out. She grabs the gun. Shoot that. No. What happens first? Yeah, she's trying to leave. And he says something slick. After he found out, you know, she was like dipping out, dipping out. And she says something slick. Oh, no, he had said something slick. So she turns around. She shot him. His bodyguard shot her. And then she shot the bodyguard. She got away, got in the car, went home, packed the kids, moved to Miami, and said, Daddy's on a trip. And she moved there. And she, from there, started selling um, cocaine. She started from one kilo that she happened to smuggle from her journey over there. And, um... Yeah, she started from there and just made pretty much like a big empire. How she did it was she was importing drugs from Colombia, but she was doing it through all of the prostitute friends that she had back in the day. So she would have them patting their bras, their panties, their everything with cocaine, fly them over here, pay them good money, sell that, and just keep like the flow going. And that's how she was making her money. And so after that, um, it just got bigger and bigger. She made her own connections in Miami. She started making people, you know, like a little like further across the shoreline and she was killing it. Started smoking crack cocaine. She was selling coke, the stuff you sniff. She started smoking crack, the stuff you put in the pipe and smoke. Um, and she pretty much started to lose her mind. The FBI found out about all of her trap houses or her safe houses or whatever. And they started, like, you know, busting them one by one the whole time. She thinking, she paranoid because she on drugs that she thinking is an informant in her group the whole time. It's the feds that actually then, like, tap some codes and shit, and they know where everything is. So the feds realized that. They started fucking with her, and they just kept doing it, and they kept doing it, kept doing it. And eventually she started killing off all of her partners um, until they basically locked her ass up. And by the th- when she got locked up, she had three kids. By the time she got out of jail, all of them were dead. Yep, through the different stuff. One of them got shot doing a drug deal. One of them got shot just doing his regular old thing. And I forgot what happened to the other one. And that is what she built the whole empire for, was for her kids. So, yeah, watch Griselda. It's really, really, really good. Um, I got a couple of questions for Asantre real quick. And basically, if any of y'all are from here, then you might can relate. But I want you to tell me a little bit about growing up in Mississippi. Well, uh, growing up in Mississippi was... Like, what did y'all have? What did y'all do for fun? Um, what did y'all have? What did y'all do for fun? Um, what was the schools like? Was it like real good? Was they fighting all the time? I don't know, but like, what kind of stuff were y'all into? Um, growing up in Mississippi was like growing up in like a very small cult. <laughs> this is being for real, like, um, it was very much like Hollister area, Cumbian fence, like kind of vibes, little limit ass vibes. But I loved it. I ain't gonna lie. Look, here I go. I loved it. I ain't gonna lie. Like my time there was great. Um, it was very homey. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody's into everybody's business. Like, every now and again, it'll pop off. You'll be see a fight. But for the most part, as a kid, like, everybody got along. It was a couple people who were bullies, but nobody really cared about them type shit. Yeah. Um, everybody was country as fuck because we're country, and everybody was, like, beach goers because we were on the coast. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we live on the beach. You always heard about the old people going to the casinos, so it was like you really wanted to go. Um, I don't know. It was just a real outdoorsy experience. Now, Mississippi, I would not recommend moving there because the kids growing up now, 13, 14, 15, shooting each other, killing each other every other day. Uh, so much rough on literally, it's so rough right now. Like... Every week, it's at least four or five murders, and it's a small town, so it's just like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, the population ain't even at a million, ain't even at a few hundred thousand, what I'm trying to tell you. So it's just like, I ain't, I ain't even at a hundred thousand if you, if you really just look up Pascagoula. <laughs> so it's just like, to, for all the murders, yeah, y'all need to chill it, cool out. But I ain't gonna lie, it feels pretty safe for me. 
Um, walk around, do what you want to do. Just don't be in the wrong place at the wrong time, cause there are those. I was just uh there last week. Um, at the gas station. Best weed in the motherfucking world. The only weed hitting on anything that's Mississippi weed is California. Hit, go get you some weed from Mississippi. Be careful doing it. It's illegal down there. Mm. Mm, so, look, allegedly get you some if that's a phrase. <laughs> um, all right. So another question: Living in different cities. I know you lived in Houston. You lived in Mississippi. You lived in Virginia. Um, literally everywhere. Louisiana. What is your favorite? I would say top two cities. Oh yeah, Atlanta too. Um, your favorite top two cities, and I guess bottom two, and why? My top two would definitely be um Chesapeake. Shout out VA. Shout out to Virginia. I absolutely love Chesapeake. I loved everything about it. Um, my neighbors were really sweet to me. Um, the neighborhood was really sweet to me. There was a bus system. It was nice. Um, I don't know. It was just like the whole town. It was easy to find jobs. It, everything was just you want to settle down there. My second would probably be. <laughs> Houston, fuck Atlanta. No, nah, I'm just playing. I would say Atlanta. Look, I would give it to Atlanta if y'all wasn't so motherfucking dirty. If y'all would do a little bit more for the streets. If y'all didn't hate the black people so much, even though it's the black people's kingdom. Like, how could y'all make laws against the black people? But this is literally their space. Don't give me. I don't know. Y'all take your thing from us, but I digress. <clears throat> um, Houston because it's. It welcomes you in. And yeah, the streets are a little messed up here now and again, but guess what? There is no one Wait, in, a, in the top, the top, top two. Oh, okay. Houston and Virginia. Okay. I said I would have gave it to Atlanta, but oh, they just yeah. don't they don't fuck with us African Americans. Um Houston will like there is nowhere in the world with commodity like Houston, like and just all around, bitch, I'm from Houston. I'm from Texas. You, It ain't nothing better than this. I'm going to tell you about my city. Everything I talk about, every, my way of life is going to be to represent this motherfucking city, this town, the people around here. Like, yeah, we about our shit and we'll die for what we believe in because it's us. Nowhere in the world is like is like Houston. In my, and I've been all around the world. Houston got it. Bottom two, Lafayette. Louisiana. I will put somebody as close to Houston as far as like die hard about their city. People from New York, them niggas. You gonna hear that shit from the time they wake up to the time they go. But see in New York, they don't go they, they don't <laughs> fucking play about New York, baby. But see, I ain't never spent no time in New York, so I can't. See, I can't. I can't. Yeah, we, we definitely do. So I can't just speak on. Yeah, but. Houston, them bitches about it. And then um, bottom two, Lafayette, Louisiana, y'all are racist. Y'all have nothing for blacks. Um, I feel like living in that town was so small-minded and so 20 years ago. Um, I ain't going to lie, it's a beautiful city. Y'all have, what's it called, Zodiac? Um, Fuck him. Um, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, y'all got y'all little y'all little music festivals and Lafayette and animal shows. I absolutely oh, love that. Love I think that is precious. Mm-hmm. It's like Zodiac or something like that. Mm-hmm. That is so precious to me. Everything else from the way y'all look. To the way y'all look at me ugh, as a black person, don't like it. Um, also, in the bottom two, I would have to put Atlanta. 
Why the, the violence is? Yes, because why are y'all so motherfucking against seeing black people thrive? Even though we thriving in this bitch because, you know, allegedly black people are scamming here, but I have nothing to do with that. I just heard this with the other ones out here doing. I work at Delta. I would like something to do with it. If you can reach out to me via Instagram, <laughs> Snapchat, or anything like that, I don't want to do it. But if you would lay the information out, I could probably, somebody would find it useful, I'm sure. My thing is, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to jail with your ass. Make me, I will be your boyfriend. I will hold you down. The money ain't going nowhere when you get out of jail. Hold you down. I will not hold you down. I'm not doing jail. I'm not going to jail. You going to jail. You going to jail. I will sit and, D, I'm the type, I will sit and wait for you. To get out of jail, I will hold every dollar. You won't miss one penny. Wow. Honestly, D, I really would. Like, I will hold somebody down. Your money is there. I got my own money. Kiss me through the phone. I would love today this camera because y'all could keep up with a working man like me. And not too many people who would do that. I'm too clingy to date somebody in jail. I'm going to be crying and stuff and sad. I can't go through that. We're going to break up. 20 minute call, $7. I'm with it. Video. Video, baby. We can get a lot done. I could get seven dollars closer to a catfish basket. <laughs> Listen, I'm going hungry behind this camera. <laughs> just imagine the lavish lifestyle we will live. No, for real. I spoil you and you spoil me. All right, so we going we got some more stuff, um, and we're almost done. I want to see how many minutes we got, y'all. Oh, this is cute. Okay, this is going to be my longest episode ever, and that's fine. We're 46 minutes in. That's awesome. I'm going to do like a cute hour, 13-ish. I'm going to cut this part out. No, I'm not. Actually, we're going to keep it because I don't know how to cut it out uh, in a video. Um. Okay, yeah. So, dating apps. We're going to talk about that. So, this is like the dating apps that I've used, which they kind of get exhausted. I'm kind of tired of them. Um. The biggest hit yet, Facebook dating. I would say put them at the top of your list. If you're looking for a nice piece of um, penis or hole, I will go there to um, Facebook dating. It's a great place. And go to the friendship tab. Go to the friendship tab. The other one is kind of phony. You don't want no part of that. The actual, you know, the one they'll try to put you with somebody in um nevada or pennsylvania and all that kind of stuff you go to the friendship tab he point three miles away you're welcome um but no so yeah i want to know some stories from you or not some stories two different stories and we're gonna both give one and it could be any kind of dating app does it matter it can be tinder grinder jack sniffies the blowers um trying to think of more bumble plenty of fish tagged I know, I only um um uh, what's it's <laughs> tagged it's i'm missing a couple black people meet christian mingle mm. um what's the one with the sugar daddies on it that's um that beat one binder. is there's a new one beat finder feet find oh wow i got nice feet i think i like to think um so yeah, my wild. So we're gonna do the wildest story that we have for one of those apps, and then we're gonna do. Um, okay, never mind. We're not gonna do. Um, we're still gonna do it, but it doesn't matter right now. So I think the wildest thing that I've done on an app was. Um, it was kind of wild to the younger me, but now I'm kind of growing up. It's like it's not that wild anymore, but it's still kind of wild, I guess, in essence. Because it happened when I was young. But, no, yeah, so I was 17 years old, and I had just found out about the apps, which is also horrible. I want to say really, 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 really quick. Do not be on them apps. If you are 17 and below, do not be on none of them dating apps because y'all ain't doing nothing but catching. Y'all either going to catch a case or make somebody else catch a case, and you're pretending that you are an adult and you're not. That is disgusting. Don't do it. It's horrible. You're a piece of shit. I was a piece of shit at the time but um no i'm cleaning up the shit behind myself 
So, yeah, don't do that. It's horrible and it's illegal and you can go to jail for it. Yeah. So, And just because you're 18 don't mean you should go and like it's not cool to have a baby daddy i mean a sugar daddy like it's not what it seems <laughs> granted you can find some amazing sugar daddies and they are out there who don't want no sugar and whatnot but even then it's always something and so what was I going? Oh, okay. So yeah, don't do that. But I was young and I was on there and at the time this guy had hit me up and he was like he was interested in buying my underwear. And I was like I was kinda confused. I'm like, buy my underwear and he was like, Yeah, and I only want the underwear if he said I either want you to have soil denim, to a piss denim, uh, or just worn them for a couple of days. And that's pretty much the only way um, that I want them. Or he said, oh, you can come on them or whatever. Mind you, whole time, I'm a young boy in high school. I threw them bitches on for probably two days, didn't take a shot. Well, no problem. I didn't give a fuck at the time. Um, he said he was going to give me $75. To me, that was a lot of money in the 11th grade. Um, and that was enough to go out for the weekend. Hello, we ready to get McDonald's. We going to the skating rink. We might get into the movies. We going to sneak into the movies, but I can buy snacks. So that's pretty much, I was with that. And so I was scared to set it up. Now, the thing is, I didn't want to meet with an older weirdo creep. And so I was like, all right, we got to meet at a public place. So what I did was I was like, all right, you got to meet me at this time. At the time, my aunt was sending me on a taxi to school but I just walked a little bit ways down the street. It was a Dollar General right there. And then I got, you know, in a taxi from there. And then I went to school. So I was like, you can meet me at this Dollar General. <clears throat> so I went to the Dollar General. Or I went in first. And then um, I was like, I'm going to put it on the third shelf. Wherever shelf I put it on. And I was like, um, you know, just go in. Leave the money right there. And, you know, that's how we're going to do it. So, and that's exactly what we did. So, I went in, left the um, underwear right there. It was like a teddy bear. I put the teddy bear on top of it. And he went in. He left the money. I went in there and grabbed it. And I never saw him, though. So, I don't know if he was looking at me the whole time. I don't know if he ever saw me. If he actually grabbed him and just drove off. Um, but I blocked him right after that. And, yeah, that was probably the craziest thing I've done on the app. Now I'm thinking it's kind of psychotic what happened outside the app, but that's a story for another time. Um, so yeah, what about you? What is something wild that's happened to you or you've done or whatever? D, I thought I was gonna tell y'all about how to acquire a sugar daddy, but you just telling that story made me remember mm -hmm. a time before I ever knew about an app. A time, cause I'm old, you know, yeah. 27. Um, a time. When there was Craigslist misconnections, no, Craigslist still goes to to this to this day right now. No, they sell like jobs oh, no, and yeah, houses, yeah, yeah, like no, everything is on Craigslist. But back, I, they had an actual back page. Yeah. Oh, so it was an actual back website page. back page. Yeah. Okay. I you were, alive, but, but you wasn't just thinking about that stuff at this time. I wanted to see it. I wasn't either. I just heard about the older kids around me doing it. No, mm. We were on back page for the record. Mm -mm. <laughs> Them people be 33 and 40. Through the 33 through 40, they was on back page. But no, I was on Craigslist. Mm. And um, they used to have like guy, girl, like guys looking for guys, girls looking for girls, all type of shit. So I got on there just trying to make calls, just to have a call with somebody because I'm just now trying to experience being gay. So I want to talk to somebody about this. And honestly, I don't even know if I'm really gay at this point. I'm just researching a little bit. Yeah. I got on like there. Sex operator? Type shit. That's what I'm doing. I'm being the sex operator. But I'm going on the website, Craigslist, to look for someone to call potentially. Oh. So I'm looking through the, the people. Caller. Yeah, I'm the caller. Okay. So 
I'm looking through people and it's this fine ass black boy on there, y'all. Why I decide to message this man. We email him. Email this man. Y'all, he emailed me back, sent me his phone number. I call this man. Instantly, I'm like, this black man grew up in the country on the phone. And then he sound old as fuck. But I'm just going with it because I got so many questions to ask. You're a gay person. There are no gay people from where I'm from, like, at all. It's three of us. So it's just like, um, I want to know. I got questions about gay, this gay, this what you call being gay and all that. He was like, yeah, I'm two cities over. We can meet up. It's the Ocean Springs Walmart. But before I end up driving over there, we're over here all having this long ass talk. But I'm, it's like weird. Oh, like, yeah, like, and it's just weird to me because I'm like, damn, man, you sound old as fuck. You talking about you got your uncle with you. You, you gonna, you wanna meet me at the Walmart? D, I get to the Walmart. I go, so I call the number. They tell me to meet them in the bathroom. Fuck no. Not meeting in the bathroom. The man and his supposedly uncle. Here I go, meet you in the bathroom. Me being me, I'm not finna meet you in the bathroom. What the fuck do I look like, bitch? I will fuck you in the in the motherfucking center of the clothing in the middle of the store before I go in the bathroom. Bitch, you ain't finna get me in the bathroom, motherfucking sedate yeah. me and kill me up in there. Yeah. I don't know you, bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was like, yeah, meet me in the bathroom. So, I'm looking, I'm trying to scope out the scene the whole time. I'm looking. I don't see nobody going in and out of the bathroom. So it's two bathrooms in Walmart, one in the front, one in the back. I go from the front bathroom to the back bathroom to see maybe somebody might follow me. And I go all the way and I actually go into the back bathroom and no one was in there. But when I came out, I noticed these two men walking towards the bathroom. But they didn't see me come out, but I saw them. Mm. D. Why did I see them going to the bathroom, see them come out of the bathroom, see me walk towards the other bathroom? Because I'm like, fuck them two men. Now let me see who in the other bathroom yeah. to see maybe the dude I was looking for is really up in that bathroom. Yeah. And them two men are just some coincidence. D, why did the two men come in the other bathroom? Here I go. Is there entering in <laughs> me walking out? <laughs> So, at this point, I know that they know it's me, and I know that it's them. Yeah. D, it's looking like an 80-year-old man, a 35-year-old man. These bitches, every piece are ready to kidnap me and take me out to the boonies. We already in the fucking sticks. The boonies ain't far. <laughs> Here I go. Got so far away from them folks so fast, I literally started running out of Walmart. Got in my motherfucking car and did the fucking dash. Never did, never, ever, ever did that. If I meet you, bitch, I seen you coming. <laughs> no, it wasn't even that we were playing. I was playing on that. The man just said he had his uncle with him, and I wanted to meet him because, but they was going to rape my ass and motherfucking kidnap me. I just knew it. So that was my never again story, but I ain't going to lie. Me, I'm the type of person, I don't always remember that I said never again. So, I met my sugar daddy on another app, but that's another story for another day. Shout out to the sugar daddies. Um, yeah, as I said. Car. That was real nice of him. His friend needs a car now. The cash app is posted for anybody that can help out with that. <coughs> Please, hello. We're down bad. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, I want to tell a super super quick story. So I actually had somebody. I back when this was probably about twenty eighteen. Yeah, I was dating this guy in the military, and um. Yeah, so he actually got me a promise ring. And it fucked me up for a second because in my head, the way that the nigga did it, I'm like, all right, this is a little too much. Um, we basically hit all, we, first of all, nigga ain't have no type of presentation at all. He had basically had picked like a petty argument. Um, 
Tagasco like kind of like get me upset and then we ended up getting a hotel room ended up getting a hotel room this nigga had two clone the willies at the hotel if you don't know what a clone of willy is that basically is a mold that you would make where you can basically clone your own penis and you clone your own penis and you give it to your partner <laughs> and so <laughs> so basically what he did was we went to the hotel he had um ordered me some food we ate we was chilling and you know have like a real good conversation and we try to like make the clone the willy thing mind you is a bigger process i don't know if y'all remember when it like hit the market but it was like a big thing when it like at first happened um so we tried to nick cannon. nick cannon made that wow no i don't know if he made that but i know he did one shout out to nick cannon um but no so yeah we did it we didn't realize like all the stuff you kind of had to go through so basically you got to like put the little stuff together then you have to put it like in this little tube thing and you have to like put it on your penis but not only you got to put it on your penis it's cold and it feels weird and you have to stay hard for like i want to say like four to five minutes before like the silicone thing dry so basically what happened the first time that we did it Oh, we tried to make it on him and it did not work because the nigga couldn't stay hard because the shit was so cold. And he put it in the refrigerator on top of all things when it says to leave it out. He was like, oh, we put it in the refrigerator. We can speed the process up. Now your dick is cold and your balls are small because you didn't fuck that up too. So we couldn't do that. We ended up having to make another one. Um, Ended up making the other one. This nigga had some alcohol inside of a bag, some weed, some blunts. Put the little dick dildo thing inside of there, came bedside, said this little poem that he had made up. It probably took about three to five minutes to make, and he gave me a promise ring. And, yeah. And so that was that. It didn't work out, unfortunately. <clears throat> well, I almost said a couple of different set of words. but <laughs> it, 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 Look, it did not work out. Um... So at the time when we had broke up, it was a mess. I thought I was in a uh, like a white girl movie. I was living in Virginia Beach at the time. So what I did, I went to the ocean front and I sat there and I was just playing a little music and stuff. And I was like, you know what? Fuck him. I'm done. I took the ring and I threw it in the ocean. And yeah, that's the story of my promise ring. It didn't last long, but it was sweet. Um, and that's the closest I've gotten to marriage thus far. So still single. Um, what is the craziest spot you've had sex at? Mine is definitely. I would, mm, I would say maybe the Bush Gardens family restroom, the amusement park. Yeah, I would say the Bush Gardens family restroom. Um, what's the craziest place than that? I don't want to say that place. Actually, there is a crazy place in there, but I don't want to say that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, it's been rough. It's been rough. Um, but I would say the parking lot of a place I shouldn't have been at. What about you? No comment. Mm. I ain't pleading the fifth. Look, and that's fine. <laughs> Look, and that's fine. I know my mama's gonna watch this, and I don't need her all up in. No comment. Look, whole time when I did this at the family restroom of Bush Gardens, I was actually with my aunt, my cousin, and my younger cousin, and I was only like maybe seventeen years. I don't know. I was probably like fifteen, sixteen years old, and we was riding a ride, and everybody was scared to ride it except me. So I'm in a line with this white boy. And he just like keep asking questions, asking questions. He was like, "Hey, what's up? Oh, you from here? Oh, you from Virginia?" He was like, "Oh, you from here? You got a girlfriend?" And I was like, "No." And this is around the time where it was like, "You know what? Fuck it. I want to fuck a guy soon. My hormones was racing. I won't get no coochie, and I wanted some butt." And so um, he was following me around. He was like, "Okay, we rode this ride, we rode that ride." And my aunt wanted to be seen. We got off the one ride, so we had kept on going. And he was like, "Have you ever messed with a guy before?" And I was like, "No." And so, which was a lie, haha, I was a whore, but he didn't know. Um, but so we went back to 
and he was like, oh, well, let's go to the bathroom. And I was like, no, I kept saying no. He kept asking. So we finally went and we went into the bathroom and we did the nasty. And I went back to my aunt and we just had a fun rest of the day at Bush Gardens at the amusement park. And nobody knew what happened. I still don't even know if they know to this day, honestly, but we'll see if they watch the pod. Um, so, yeah. All right. In honor of Black History Month, we're going to wipe down this list real quick. Um, and we're just going to name a couple of stuff that we like from Black History people. The one we're going to start with is shows. Um, we're going to name our top three black shows. So I would say my top three black shows is That's So Raven, um, Sister, Sister, and I'm going to say Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. Well... I'm going to say motherfucking Madea. <laughs> Shout out to Tyler Perry. You motherfucking kill this shit every time. Um, I'm also going to say Finding Dion because that's just, it was just special to my heart. That's a show? Okay. A TV show. Um, Thirdly, but not motherfucking least because I'm an old ass man and I will never stop watching the good, the good mother. I mean, good times, but I wasn't going to say good times. I was going to actually say Sanford and Son, but both of those are equally in my heart. Okay, we're going to do our top five artists. So this is music artists. It could be male, female, dead or alive, old, new, popular, underground, local, or aspiring. Um. Mm, well, my top five is pretty much the same across the board. Um, so mine is Biggie, Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Nicki Minaj, and I kind of always split the last one. Um, no, I take that back. I'll give it to him. Tyler the Creator. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna just go ahead with the greatest. You know. Female, Cardi B, Meg. That's as black as it motherfucking get. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> don't play with me. Well, I, since he don't want Cardi B as a black woman, he, I remember that, cancel his ass, not me. I guess I'll have to go with Meg. And, um, I also want to give a big shout out to my nigga Capo Chapo. I want to give a shout out to my nigga BTA Rico. I want to give a shout out to my nigga Cash Out. Yeah, they really killing the shit in the music gang. Go look them up. Also, listen, this boy is a singer. His name Jamie. When I tell y'all, Jamie, look up the song called What's the Use? And that's it. Shout out Jamie. Um, top five actors, um, uh, male or female. I'm gonna say Viola Davis. I'm gonna say um, Taraji P Henson, Monique Denzel Washington, and Will Smith. Okay, me with the good ones. With the good ones. Um. Hmm, let me think. I'm going to go ahead and put Tyler Perry back on the list. <laughs> um, Be killing it every single time. Monique still went on an apology. But I love you down. <laughs> she said make it right. <laughs> Monique said make it right. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> Look, what, what I said, Tyler Perry. Um, I'm trying to think of some other people. You know, I like the whiteies. Mm. You can rename who I said, too. Oh, yeah, Viola Davis, then. Yeah. For sure, Ty- Taraja P. Also, <laughs> look, um... I don't know. I, I can't think of anyone else who I just want to give a special shout out to besides me. Be a male dude if you want. Who do you look like? Um, 
What's that man name? Um, Michael B. Jordan. You're beautiful. All right, and the last one, we could do top three comedians. I'm going to say um, Monique, Cat Williams, and Bernie Mac. I'm going to put a Bernie Mac. I'm going to say Eddie Murphy. That's my second. I'm going to say um, Cat Williams is my first. And Dave Chappelle is my third. Because black don't crack. <laughs> Okay, so that's that. All right, sorry. So now we're going to do the um, segments that I like to do at the end. I only got two of them today, but I kind of like, I got three different questions, I think, for each one. Um, Oh, no, that's not true. All right. So I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do kudos first, and I'm going to give it to Lil Wayne. Um. And yeah, because I've been listening to Lil Wayne since I was a fucking little kid. I remember the when I for Christmas one year, they got me a it was like a little CD player where you kind of like open it and close it and had the little headphones to it. And I had my little CD player going around and I was saying a fireman and I remember watching him on BET, MTV and he kind of I think he it's low key the kind of person that kind of got my brain in a way to where I kind of appreciated like language a little bit more, which made me kind of learn like more languages because what he was doing with words when I was little, I was like, nobody talks like that. Like it was just like so abnormal to me the way he would like put his lyrics and not even that. It's like I ain't never met this man from a can of paint, but the, like the stuff that he's saying, I can like literally picture it in my head and nobody had ever done it like that before. And it was cool to me. And um yeah and he's still relevant to this day still making hits still got bars and yeah i'm just grateful to be alive at the same time as him and i haven't seen him live i will say that i've seen all of my favorite people live so far um but lil wayne is the only one i have not seen so my next opportunity i definitely got to see him live before that nigga stop touring or something like that because we can't afford for him to pull a rihanna i'm gonna break down and cry so shout out to Lil Wayne. Um, all right, and so now, oh yeah, no, you do one. Yeah, if you have a kudos, you want to shout somebody out. You know, I love to shout out Megan, the motherfucking stallion. You are literally killing it all across the charts. You are taking all the hate and turning it into profits, girl. You are motherfucking slashing every piece of competition in your motherfucking way. I'm really proud of every piece of popping your shit that you push out of that beautiful asshole of yours. But that's my piece to you. I love you, girl. Fuck the girl who tried to speak on your name. But I ain't gonna do too much. <laughs> we don't know who that girl is. Um... Well, shout out to Megan. I love you down. Um, we definitely don't know who that girl is. Yeah. Because <laughs> people. <laughs> anyway, life's great. Puss is still good. Um, and so, yeah, shout out to Megan Thee Stallion. I love her as well. And um, keep rapping. Keep rapping. That is what I love about you. I want some more freestyles. Bring them back. I fell in love with Megan Thee Stallion through freestyles, to be honest. And I want you to bring those back. You got good stage presence. I saw you at one music festival, and you fucking killed it. Um, Yeah, shout out to her as well. Would you rather pee a ping pong or poop a bowling ball? Piss out a ping pong ball, or poop a bowling ball. So a ping pong ball is about that big. No, it's about that big. And it's going to go through the butthole. That's where it's going. Listen, I feel like once my butthole protruded to be that big, it's going to contract. It's gonna, yeah. Maybe your penis might too. <laughs> yeah. If you could kind of like, if you can get it like, they that. say kidney stones are some of the worst. Like a Squeeze it up like a yogurt. Squeeze it up like a yogurt. And it's out. Maybe I'm 
that's a sick thing to think about. (laughs) (laughs) No. Okay. Would you rather have sex with a goat and nobody knows or never have sex with a goat but everybody thinks you did? Take into account nobody ever wants to talk to you, be near you, or even have sex with you because everybody thinks that you're the creep goat fucker from around the corner. However, you've never fucked a goat. Or you can fuck the goat. No sweat off your back. Who knows? But you fuck that goat. You and God know. Does the goat pussy give you STDs? No STDs and no... um. What's the um, rabies? No rabies. Fresh, clean goat pussy. And milk. I seen a man fuck a fish. So that mean you fuck a goat? I would be known as the goat fucker just being real. <laughs> 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 so you can't fuck the goat. I can't fuck the goat either. Listen, I'm gonna move across country, across town. Yeah, yeah. Look, and if the story follow me, bitches are weird. And if the story follows me, somebody's gonna love me eventually. And there might be somebody who really fucks goat out there for me. Yeah, and you can blame it on them, and then it's all fine. Yeah, I reckon. All right, there's one more. Um, I thought it was. Oh, okay. Um, would you wear a jean? Would you rather wear a jean size too small or two shoe sizes too big? A jean size too small. I was thinking the same thing. Because I can at least make this cute, roll it up. It just be super tight. But it's gonna be like it's a jean size too small. Meaning like they fit great, but it's the one too small. It's like it's gonna give your butt that kind of like flat look. Or it's gonna lie. It's not gonna come. I ain't got no booty no way, so it's gonna be fine. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat, but I'm I'm gonna squeeze my tiny ass up in them jeans because I don't want no big ass shoes. I'm gonna be tripping over and bust my fucking head wide open. <laughs> no, for real. What is something you can do that people don't know, or something that you know people don't know that you like to share? I can read people's minds. Can you prove it? If I ask you to think of a color right now. Okay. Not you, D. Them. <laughs> no. Uh-uh, me neither. Blah. And I tell you the number seven, seven, three, four. The first color you're going to think about is Green. green. Don't you fuck with me. You shut your mouth right now. He cheated somehow. It's me looking for seven seven three four around here. Cause what the fuck? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking green for real. Um, or maybe it's that I got mind control. <laughs> mm, Look, stay away from that. It's not just me. It's all Sagittarius people. Sagittarius people are on the brink of greatness. Evolution. Greatness. Mm. Greatness. It's what we on the like brink I, of. I fucks with them. Um, Scorpios are kind of slow. Lion ass Leos. They kind of, yeah. Mm, yeah. I got a cousin. I got one cousin that I like. That's a Leo. Everybody else a Leo is kind of weird. Um, because that was kind of cool, but mm, mm. yeah, shout out Aquarius, shout out Sagittarius, Pisces. I don't know much about them. I like her, I like her. Um, Scorpios, and who else sucks so bad? Capricorn, Virgo. Yeah, just shout out to Aquarius and Sagittarius. Yeah, that's pretty much it. it. Yeah, that's Rapid all you got at this up. point. Um, 
Yeah, so there's two things I can do. I don't know if I can do both of them. Honestly, I'm going to try my best. Um, I'm getting kind of old, but when I was little, they had me remember the presidents in order and the states in alphabetical order. Here we go. <coughs> Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Rhode Island, wait, wait, yikes. Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. And then, okay, there's one more. So, what's this one? The presidents. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson. Hold on, I'm going to start over. Washington Adams. Wait, hold on, y'all. I might have forgot. <laughs> hold on. Wait. Washington Adams. Jefferson. Yikes! I might gotta look at the list, guys. Look, give me a refresher. Sorry, give me a refresher. Adams. Washington Adams. Jefferson Madison. Monroe Adams. Jackson. Van Buren. Harrison. Tyler Polk. Taylor. Fillmore. Pierce. Buchanan, Lincoln, Johnson, Grant, Hayes, Garfield, Arthur, Taylor, Harrison, Van Buren, McKennedy, Roosevelt, Tav, Wilson, Harley, Kuvich, Hoover, Roosevelt, Truly, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, was that for Obama, Biden. Yikes. Ew, that's disgusting to say. I'm not going to say. Take off the last two. Take off the last two, for Obama sure. Obama forever president. Obama forever president. I don't know who the last two are. They had it on the list, but it was a typo, clearly. Um, But, no, yeah, that's all we got for y'all today. I appreciate y'all tuning in for the episode, and I appreciate for you coming for the episode. He's definitely going to come back. He is back and forth and all over, and he is also single. And he's ready to mingle. And guess what? We're going to keep it PG-13. But if you follow him, he'll tell you what. And what is your Instagram name? Um, and Oh, whatever you want them to follow you on. What do you want them to follow you on? If you want them to follow you at all, or if you want to leave them with a couple of words, um, we fuck with you just for being here. So what do you have to say? Um, D is the greatest. Uh, Shannon Sharp, you're gonna have to catch up, buddy. Um, <laughs> I'm just grateful. I love you so much. Follow me on all social media. You gotta tell them what it is. Tell them what the social media is. A S O N T R E. On all platforms. Okay. All right. Period. Well, um, I will see y'all next time. And yeah, love, peace, hair grease, and get that dirty nigga out your house. Tax time is here. Don't let him get no money for FanDuel. Don't put no money on that little betting op bullshit. Um, and yeah, tune into the next episode. Love y'all. <laughs>